Yeah, we knew the forecast. We knew what this could turn into. High winds. Rain. But, it could also turn into a great adventure. So we started the weekend as we had originally planned at Glass Buttes to find some obsidian. Glass Buttes is a designated rock camping site and it's all on BLM land. So unlike finding an artifact like an obsidian arrowhead that you're supposed to leave behind for the next person to find, it is perfectly okay to collect raw obsidian here. In fact, the public is allowed to collect quote unquote reasonable amounts, which they define as 250 pounds per person per year. Uh, for personal use, and you don't need a permit, although you are only supposed to use hand tools. So we made our way into the area to find camp, hoping not to find too many people on a holiday weekend. We had a small spot in mind that we have been to previously, um, but had never camped there because we're usually with a group. Um, but it would be perfect for the two of us in just one vehicle. All right, guys. Day one camp at Glass Butte. This is one of the few kind of secluded spots you can get. It's small and it's not very level, but it'll work for just us. And we're going to be driving around so the truck is still very not level. But we need breakfast slash lunch because Nicole's getting hangry. <laughs> so that's what we're doing first.
past our usual one of our favorite spots where there's some really pretty um, mahogany and pumpkin. Um, it's a really cool hillside, kind of drops down to a valley, but we drove past it, which led to some new roads. But the great thing about being out here is that you really can't go wrong. Pretty much all of these hills have some great stuff to find, so you don't lose. Awesome. Always be careful kids, this can happen to you too. <laughs> so like I said, you just don't lose out here. You might have found a new favorite hill with all this really dark red and black is beautiful. Alright, so we're back here in camp after our obsidian hunting. Pretty worn out after taking those big pieces up the hill. <laughs> um, and it's just starting to sprinkle a little bit here and there. Not bad yet, so fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that it holds out, but we'll see. But pretty quiet. Nicole's in the truck reading. And I'm just kind of walking around, enjoying all the sounds of the birds. It's beautiful out here today. Okay, so this is why we might be hard to adventure with. It's two o'clock, we came, we found obsidian. It's a little windy, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna head over to Christmas Valley and our next destination right now, instead of in the morning. Headed out on a route that I had put together that would bring us to the Lost Forest Natural Research Area in about 40 off-road miles. This was a new route for us and by sheer luck all of the roads I picked out worked without a single surprise or closure. Everything was so green here in the early season and that combined with the moody desert skies made for some stunning scenery. And when you see blue on a map in the desert, it doesn't really mean a lake. This is what you get. And despite some rain, we were soon approaching the ancient stand of ponderosas that have somehow survived through years of too little rain.
and shifting sand dunes encroaching on their tenuous hold. We headed for the northeast corner of the research area to scout out a couple of the six dedicated campsites in the area. We were hoping for some seclusion and we were not disappointed. The second spot that we checked out was the keeper. Alright, so this is camp in the Lost Forest. We ended up driving all the way up to kind of the northeast corner of the uh, study area. The ponderosas are a little more sparse here than they were farther in, but pretty awesome. Got one heck of a leaner here. I'm gonna stay away from him. But it is trying to sprinkle just a little bit at the moment but not bad yet, so we'll see. No wind yet either, so that's good. All right, so the fun surprises you get when you're out. Plugged in our propane bottle, and it was hissing like crazy, and that's why. Broken pipe. So we're cooking on a fire tonight. Say hello, fire master. <laughs> Look, this is what we're cooking on tonight. Well, good morning guys. So after our quick dinner over the fire, unintended, last night we went to bed fairly quick. Um, it was still getting a few sprinkles here and there so we stuck everything under the rig as a chance to keep it dry. So ended up not really having anything come down at all so that was nice. Um, but yeah, so no breakfast this morning. No stove to, uh, to boil any water, so we've got some snacks, so that'll keep us going, but we're going to hit the road probably fairly early. Um, head over to, probably going to hit the dunes, and then probably head over to Crack in the Ground, because that's one we still haven't seen yet. So um, Whether or not we spend another night somewhere depends. Um, going to see if we can try and find some more firewood, probably. Um, and yeah, so we're just going to play it by ear and go on the adventure, so come along for the ride.
And in no time at all, we found ourselves on the Christmas Valley Sand Dunes. when you try and climb on a hill <laughs> so you don't get hit by a vehicle. You, you, yeah. And next up was a quick hike at Crack in the Ground. We had been the hole in the ground, but we hadn't done the crack yet. And it was our turn. So overall, Crack in the Ground was really cool. It is a really neat formation to see. And if you have the time, I would highly recommend doing the entire length of it instead of just the first section like we did. But we had quite a few miles to put in before we were getting to our next area where we had planned the camp. While we found a beautiful little spot at the end of a dead end spur, right at the base of this plateau, it seemed like no sooner that I set about doing a very poor job leveling our truck, the winds started and the rains came and they stuck around. We tried to wait it out for as long as we could, but it was obviously not going to change. Well, we have decided to move on. That was a beautiful spot, but these clouds keep moving in over the plateau. And the wind is brutal. So, yeah, we're calling it. We're just going to keep driving towards home. If something works out weather-wise, it works out, but I gotta hold my breath, so. Anywho, gear it up. Guys, it's dry right now and it may not be in like 10 minutes, so gotta get ready for the highway. And so, while the weather may have had the final say, it's like I said earlier, you never really lose when you spend a weekend in the Oregon high desert. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again for the next adventure.